Everyone for experimentation, LG didn't bat an eyelash when introducing the G5. Life is good when you play, the message on the giant screen read, as LG executives talk through the features of the new flagship, and if nothing else, we've gotta commend the company's nerve. The LG G5 is not your typical smartphone and features a modular design that allows you to remove the bottom portion to access the battery and even exchange it for something else that you'd like. But next to the comparatively conservative iPhone 6S Plus, it definitely stands out with its weird mechanism, but that's just part of the equation. So how do the two compare overall? We took our first crack at the question at MWC, and here's what we found. As you can imagine, design is one area where the G5 differs from most other smartphones on the market. But if you look past the removable bottom, things get simpler. Made out of metal and slimmer than ever before, the G5 is nevertheless not the most strikingly beautiful smartphone that we've seen. The lines of the phone are well thought out, and the smaller 5.3 inch display helps with the handling. Still, if you asked us, we'd still say that the iPhone 6S Plus is the overall more stylish of the two. It's not the more practical for sure, however, as it towers above the LG G5 and weighs significantly more. Quite frankly, while the G5 is by no means a small phone, we can see how one-handed usage would be an option, whereas with the iPhone 6S Plus, the size just makes anything but two-handed use a liability. With the G5, LG is going back to a more manageable screen compared with its last two predecessors and the 5.3-inch IPS panel sure looks good in person. In terms of resolution, the phone has the same Quad HD arrangement that we've gotten used to, while the Apple Camp is keeping things simple with a 1080p screen. Given how virtual reality is something of a topic at this year's MWC, it's worth pointing out that, if you'd like to try it out, the G5 would be the undeniably superior pick. Beyond these technicalities, it's important to point out that both devices offer advanced display functionality, with the iPhone 6 Plus relying on 3D Touch to allow for quick actions throughout the interface, while the G5 features an always-on display that shows you the time, date and notifications even when the phone is sleeping. If you like having a say in how your smartphone looks and even functions, LG's custom skin, based on Android Marshmallow, is probably the more logical pick. Interestingly enough, however, the layout is more alike to the iPhone 6S Plus's iOS than before, what with LG dropping the app drawer for good. One distinct advantage with Apple's iOS that many users often underestimate is the richer app selection, however. That's not to say that the most popular apps aren't available for Android as well, but it's certainly true that there are some omissions and that apps generally hit the iPhone first. Finally, from our testing, we definitely feel that LG could improve upon the fingerprint scanner which is integrated into the power button on the back. In comparison, the iPhone 6S Plus unlocks much quicker. After the disastrous Snapdragon 810, Qualcomm is back in the game for 2016 and the LG G5 is one of the first devices to offer its flagship Snapdragon 820 chipset. A quad-core solution, the Snapdragon 820 performs admirably from what we've seen so far and drives the rather heavy LG interface with ease. In Apple land, it's all about its custom-designed dual-core A9 processor, which sounds kind of underpowered. In reality, however, the chip has proven to be one of the best in the industry, specifically when working in concert with iOS. Ultimately, which is faster as far as benchmarks are concerned is a meaningless question. In the real world, both operate smoothly and that's what you should care about. As we said, LG likes its experimenting. And if you think about it, the LG V10 with its dual selfie camera likely served as the test bed for the main camera of the G5. A dual sensor solution, the camera allows you to capture up to 135 degree wide photos. To do so, however, the LG G5 will revert to the secondary 8 megapixel sensor. If you're willing to settle for a narrower image, you can still make use of the 16 megapixel optically stabilized camera from the G4. In comparison, the 12 megapixel snapper of the iPhone 6S Plus sounds rather pedestrian. Sure, it's also optically stabilized, but the field of view of the camera is noticeably narrower. That said, Apple has made sure that the snapper is very competitive in terms of imagery, though the age old issue with overly warm shots still stands. All said, it will be very interesting to see how these two compare once we've had more time to spend with both snappers. 2016 sure is shaping up to be an interesting year for smartphone buyers and the LG G5 will certainly appear on many people's shortlist. As in previous years, it's possible that LG will price it competitively and given time, its price will make it one of the best deals around for those of you looking for a flagship on a deal. In comparison, iPhone 6S Plus pricing will only slip a little bit as we get closer to September. Speaking of dates, the LG G5 is expected to hit key markets sometime in April, so we can assume that the big four carriers in the US will have it up for pre-order either by the end of next month or sometime in early April. So if you're an existing iOS user looking for an exciting new toy, the G5 fits the bill perfectly. 
Sure, it will strike most as the geekier of the two, but since when is that a bad thing? We'll leave you with that. Thank you guys for watching and make sure to stay tuned for more.